All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna do a little quick test here. Um, I have this connected out the headphone port to my computer so I can get a direct line out. Um, there's the YouTube audio library cassette that I have. I've set the volume to the point where it's basically zero or close to zero, just under zero dB on the computer so I'm not blowing it out. Uh, I'm gonna set it to the midpoint just the stereo. So as you can see, I, I feel like the bass boost just goes overboard, even when I have it set to zero, or I shouldn't say zero, but it's right in the center. I think the bass boost just, just doesn't sound natural at all. And uh, at least coming out of the line out anyways, if it sounds better at stereo and then have it set like this, Give it a little bit of bass boost and a little bit more treble than the bass. Um, yeah, so that's how it sounds anyways. From the line out to the cassette, from the cassette. Don't have much room, so I'm just gonna put it on my desk. I'm gonna leave it at the same position I might have to play with the volume a little bit though. Uh, I disconnected the headphone jack to my computer and let's just hear it from the speakers. Now I'm gonna rewind it a little bit so that we can at least, already there's hiss at that volume. Oh boy, it's gonna be crazy. I just wanna go back a little bit so we can actually hear what it sounds like compared to what you heard from the line out.
I'm gonna have to lower the volume. Center. This is how it actually sounds like from the speakers. Let's turn on bass boost. Also still center. still sounds side, uh, lifeless. I think it does need a little bit of bass boost and a little bit more trouble. Honestly, that sounds pretty decent. Okay. So, I also <laughs> recorded the cassette to an MP3 file just to see uh, what kind of format it is, um, what's the bit rate and whatnot. So I found out it did save it as an mp3 in the folder rcs underscore rec. I don't know what rcs stands for, um, but it is a 128 kilobits. It is in stereo, but there's some noise to it too. It's not like a clean recorded sound. It's almost like I can get a better recording if I were to just plug this into my computer.
the thing is, and I will also give you guys a live feed of how it sounds. This right here is a completely separate, uh, like a project or a kit of some sort, electronics kit where you can play, uh, it's an MP3 player that can play off of USB or, my, uh, or micro SD card. Cause it's super basic. You just stick it in there and you can play and skip tracks on the files basically and that's it. You know, you don't know what you're gonna be playing next cause there's no display or anything. And even trying to get it to record is kind of convoluted. Also, it has to be FAT32. It cannot use XFAT. It can't use any other format. And the other cool thing though, is that it can play more files than it says it can on the, uh, on the, um, on the manual. Being able to play FLAC files is kind of cool um, because it's lossless. Uh, being able to play MP3 and WAV files is already kind of cool because it allows it already stated that in the manual. But it can also play WMA files, which it didn't state in the manual either, like the FLAC files. So it plays two extra files that I know of that it is not stated in the manual. So that's pretty cool. And digital, by the way, sounds the best coming out of here. It is super clean, like there's no noise whatsoever. It sounds the best coming out of here. It's not, there's no surprise to that. What is surprising though is the Bluetooth function. Now you just switch it all the way to Bluetooth. Bluetooth pairing. Oh, and by the way, I found out that that is, by the way, a, um, it's actually a light that shows you indication of, you know, USB usage or Bluetooth pairing and all that stuff. Anyways, what is surprising, remember I said digital file seems, sounds very clear, but Bluetooth doesn't though. There's a whole lot of digital noise in the Bluetooth when using the Bluetooth function. If you are just gonna use this in the backyard, outdoors or whatever, it may not matter. It sounds good enough, honestly. Um, if you have a critical ear, that's probably where you're not gonna like this being used as a um, Bluetooth speaker. But honestly, if you were that critical, you wouldn't be using Bluetooth in the first place.
Now let's see how it actually sounds when played back on a Nakamichi RX202. All right, uh, actually I cannot use my RX202 because it's the Marantz just won't let me do it because there's only one tape loop. Anyways, long story short, I can't use my RX202 uh, without rearranging a whole lot of stuff. So I'm just gonna use uh, my recently serviced JVC TDV 531 because I can actually connect it directly to my computer so I can, you know, so I can get the uh, line it put. So without further ado, here we go.
So you want an outro, do ya? I didn't even have an intro. <laughs> um, so what do I think about the Ion Boombox Deluxe? Well, after playing around with it, I mean, it's not for us tape heads, right? I mean, if you're really into the hobby, you know, it's not going to really impress you. Um, it is impressive in its own right, considering that this is a brand new product and there really isn't anything in its classes right now that you can buy. Closest I can think of is maybe um, the Sony, uh, I think it's a CDF or the CFS. Um, that's the S70. That's the little tiny one that I reviewed earlier. Not really reviewed, I just kind of played with it, you know. I was actually looking at the um, Walgreens Tone Master crappy tape that the only deck that I was willing to sacrifice and try it on was the uh, was the S70. So that's the only thing that you can buy right now that would be comparable, I would think. But it's tiny, and if you're going to compare the Ion to something like that, I would say, hell yes, get the Ion. Yes, it's more expensive, but right now it's $70. It's a little bit more than the um, Sony. And, you know, from that point of view, yes. I think it's a way better device. It sounds better. That's number one. It uh, looks better, in my in my opinion. Um, they're both plasticky. And honestly, I still feel like Sony feels like it's a better put-together product. It's a little more... Um, better fit and finish even for a tiny $50 device but um, Ion this thing is supposed to be $140 before discount and at that price I would say no <laughs> um, mostly because it feels cheap it's it's got some weight to it but the buttons and the levers they're just don't have the tolerance. There's a lot of wiggle room on all of them, on every switch. And the dials don't feel all that great either. Um, but if you're not, you know, if you don't care about the way it feels, it's all about functionality, then yes, this thing delivers. Um, even though a lot of this stuff seems tacked on. I mean, it's tacked on, but at least it's there. Um, things like being able to play MP3s, um, and other file formats like FLAC, that was a surprise. Uh, you can play that off of a USB drive or a micro SD card. There's limitations to that though. For example, 32 gigabytes is the limit, um, the size limit of the, uh, of the drives that it can recognize. It can only recognize FAT32 formatted drives. So if you have anything bigger than 32 gigs, Windows 10, I think even Windows 7, all the way down to Windows 7, limits you uh, to fat uh, to X fat. You know what I mean? So like, if you go past 32 gigs, you need to format it in X fat. And if you do it that way, the, the boombox will not recognize it. I tried. I have a 64 gig drive. I tried, and it didn't work. I mean, it's serviceable. It sounds better than the Sony. It's not going to sound better compared to a real vintage boombox. However, some of the pitfalls of a real vintage boombox, more than likely when you buy one, you're going to have to get it serviced. So it's not going to be cheap. Okay. I spent about, I think a total of like a little over $200 for my Sanyo M9990, which I would consider a proper boombox, vintage boombox. It has none of the modern features like, you know, and conveniences that, you know, the Ion will have, like, for example, Bluetooth, which is, you, you can't discount that right now. You know, you got to remember, this is made for normal people, not tape heads like us. Um, we don't, we may not care about Bluetooth, but they do. Okay. A lot of these phones now don't even have an, uh, have a headphone jack, so you can't even use an auxiliary in. Bluetooth is going to be a thing. The... Bluetooth audio quality isn't all that great, but honestly, most people, they're not going to care. There's a background noise. There's like a little bit of interference type noise in the background. You know, it's like really low, but you really have to listen for it. And most people are probably not going to care. If you crank it up high enough and it's sitting outside, most likely it's going to be like for a barbecue or something. 
Who cares? They're not going to care. Nobody, those people aren't going to care. You're not going to be sitting in a quiet room listening like the Maxell guy in the chair. The radio is actually very sensitive. Now, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. I, you know, I live out in the suburbs, a little over 50 miles away from the city uh, near Chicago. And most of my radios, I can't pick up too much. And when they do, it's having a really hard time. This guy picks it up pretty well. I mean, yeah, you fiddle with it a little bit, but it locks on. The stereo light lights up and it doesn't waver. Not unless you waver, you know, like you move it around or something and then you may have to readjust it a little bit, but once it locks on, it locks on. It's a testament to the digital DSP tuners. Yeah, they're not like the old school tuners where you get to fine tune and everything, but new school just locks on. You have less control. It just tries to lock on as best as you can. It could be a double-edged sword. It could be a good thing, you know, if all you really want is just to get a radio station. And again, most normal people do. That's what they want. But if you want more control, I drive a stick shift, right? I like control. I have a Nakamichi ZX7. I like playing with those little manual controls. It's not going to be for me. It's for point and shoot and, you know, just as long as it works. And it works, you know? From that context, yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good uh, boombox. It sounds pretty decent. Sound sounds better than what you would think a device like this would sound, um, especially if you came from those other retro style boomboxes that were actually had mono heads and were put really cheaply. I think Techmoan or VW. No, well, it was Techmoan. Yeah, because I remember he actually made a review of one of those Aldi boom boxes that he had and he actually ran it over in a car because that's how like shitty it was you know what I mean but no not this not this guy this is a keeper if you are just looking for something that is ready to go I mean it's got a built-in battery that's another thing so it's convenient you don't have to worry about finding D cell batteries and the crazy thing is that this thing still take D cell batteries I don't know why it would need it. According to the manual, as you saw in the screenshot, for the authentic uh, retro, you know, feel, you know, something along that lines, you can put in D cell batteries. It'll make it feel heavier, that's for sure. And I don't know if it recharges the internal battery too, or is it just completely disconnects the external one? Either way, if you charge up the uh, lithium ion battery that's in there and you put d-cell batteries you're going to use up all the d-cell batteries first before you can switch over to the lithium ion and the lithium ion already says it lasts 10 hours so boy that's going to be all day playback for you and uh so there's not much to complain about it really um yeah it's a little chintzy but again, given for what it is, it's worth it for most for most people. If you're if you're in the market for it, if you are into um, vintage stuff though, and you have proper vintage stuff, it may not be for you. You're looking at me and you're saying, "Well, Nikki, you're into this kind of stuff. Would you keep it?" Yeah, for seventy dollars, I would. Why? Well, I ain't going to take my Sanyo out to a picnic or a barbecue. That's for damn sure. I Those are collector items to me. It's going to stay in the house. Um, if I take it out with me, it's because I'm showing it off to some people who appreciate it. Like maybe a boombox show or something like that. Or vintage audio or, or something like that. The Ion. I'm taking that out to a party. I'm going to take it out to a barbecue. I'm going to take it out to a picnic. Anywhere where I know people are not going to care or be careless around my stuff, maybe they'll knock it, knock it around or whatever, you know, where there's places where there are kids, soda can be spilled. You know what? I'll take the eye on, you know? <laughs> well, that's it. I hope you guys liked um, this video. Um, took a bit for me to set this up but I hope it turned out pretty well.
like and subscribe if you like it. There's more where this kind of stuff comes from. And uh, good night.